everyone for joining us for the Hero Collector Presents panel. I'm Chris Thompson, I'm the brand manager for Hero Collector, and uh, as promised, I have Ben Robinson with me, who is the head of Hero Collector, the, the guru of all things Star Trek for us. And uh, we promised to have special guests and friends, and Ryan here is both a guest and a friend. Uh, it's Ryan Denning, who is one of the designers on Discovery. And don't you know what I hope every Star Trek designer does with their ships when they're gathered? <laughs> so you can see, I mean, even the designers appreciate our ships. It's like, and these, these are ships that he's made, and he, he won't put them down. Uh, so we, we will taking them home with him. We will get to actually talking right. about these, I think. Uh, but what we wanted to do was take you through a little bit of what's coming up, what's new, and, and then open up and, and give you a, a chance to ask some questions towards the end. So if we can go on to our first slide here, which I guess is our second. So in case you missed the news, the collection has been extended to issue 180. It says in brackets, hey, exactly, start cheering now. It's, people can follow directions. So yeah, it, it is exciting. You know, some people go, oh no, there's more of them. But for most people, it's like, oh, there's more of them. This is great, you know. You can try and get some extra cabinets, fill that space. If we move on to the next one, we start showing you what we actually have coming up. So, issue 166, the Tamaria Cruiser. So, yeah, I wanted mean, I a little bit to talk about what's happening with this extension, actually. So, realistically, I think that um, 180 will be the end of the regular collection. Um, it's a lot more than we thought we would do eight years ago when I started working with this. Um, and the mission for these last issues has been to to complete some of the really sort of obvious gaps, I think. Um, to look into things that people have wanted all along that didn't originally exist as CG assets. You guys know we use the original visual effects models to make our, our most of our models. Uh, when it comes back to TNG, obviously there were no CG assets. So, uh, in this case, we've been working with uh, Ex Astra Scientia, uh, your, your brand, and it does a uh, massive thanks to him uh, to make sure we track down all the reference that we can. We get a lot from people like Greg Jean, Michael Kudo, Dad Drexler. Um, and we've been rebuilding these as uh, CG models. So, the Tamarian, like Uzo, it's like, I remember being quite excited watching TNG. It's like, oh, new ship! back in the days when that was a big thing. So I'm very pleased we were able to get to that. Um, and obviously we continue doing, so the Axnar ship has 167. We continue to do stuff from the more recent series the, where there are CG assets. And obviously you know, the Axnar ship being named after the Palm of Axnar makes it feel like it's an important part of Star Trek history. So this is another one from Enterprise, right? Yeah, this is a John Eves design from Enterprise at 167. Which I, I like that, and you'll see as we sort of go through the more of them, but I, I like that at this end of the collection we're getting into more Enterprise ships, because I think Enterprise is still, you know, overlooked to a degree, so it's nice to be getting that uh, credit back to it. Certainly in terms of ships, it has more ships than all the rest of the series put together. Yeah. It's the third, you know, the first fully CG era uh, Star Trek show. So if we go on to the next slide, let's see some more. So another Enterprise ship, the Superman uh, Freighter. Uh, again, this is part of the goal at this point to try and complete some of the kind of sets of ships. So we've done most of the Superman ships now. Um, so this was one of the sort of out glaring omissions from that front. So again, this is about trying to, to complete things and to make sure that people have full sets. Uh, again, CG model designed by Johnny and original. Then uh, we have Kess Shovel. Yeah, Evil Kess. Uh, coming back, coming back to wreak havoc on Voyager. Uh, again, Voyager. It's one of the most memorable episodes, obviously. Um, I think, you know, for me, it's like a really pivotal episode because of Seven being in there so much as well. Um, and I again felt like this was a ship that if the collection wasn't, didn't include it, it wouldn't be complete. Um, I'm sure there will still be things we haven't done at 180 that fall into that category, but trying to knock off the ones that people are like, oh, I really remember that, that was important. So if we move on from here to the next slide. 
similar to so St. Cancershire, obviously, famously, um, The Rock's first dramatic TV appearance, first acting, or potentially. Um, another very memorable episode, I think, from a really kind of, like, a point, a high point in Voyager's creativity. Um, and when they're really sort of able to produce CG ships on a regular basis. And then the Denominum, the Denominum medical ship, Denominum's obviously a significant uh, Federation race. I kind of feel like that's another one where we should be competing the set. You know, when you, you're talking about those races of Denominum's and Durians, they really ought yeah. to be covered. The same with the Tellarite. I, I think if any of these are getting you excited, Ryan, then feel free to sort of chime in with anything. He was working on working on other things at this point. He was making video games. Oh, you were making Star Trek video games. Yeah. <laughs> just might be like, oh yeah, that's the one that inspired everything I do. You know, the Denominal <laughs> Medical <laughs> Ship was uh, my, it's why I do what I do today. Uh, so if we can go on to the next slide there. Oh yeah, and again, more trying to fill in the gaps. Uh, there's Indian Sector Fighter. So you know, I very much want people at the end of this to be able to go like, I have got a complete set of Zindi ships. Uh, not least because Johnny has asked me to. Um, <laughs> but that's, uh, and as I say, that's very much the agenda at this stage, is by like, completing things and making complete sets. And, and what next to it, the Arcos, which is the many times adapted uh, batteries, uh, this particular version is from Legacy, the Soviet Tashi Yard system. Um, that again is about going back and trying to fill in those gaps of those original TNG models that never existed as CG assets. And I think, you know, you will remember, well, I bet you felt the same way I did, I was like, so excited to actually see a ship in Star Trek. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's why that's there. It's also because, um, you know, you know that we're doing these, uh, what I call James fighting ships of Star Trek, shipyards books. We wanted to make sure that we created the assets to be able to go back and illustrate every ship that's ever appeared in Star Trek. It's a mammoth task, and I don't know why I thought it was a good idea. Uh, <laughs> but we're trying to make sure we can can do that without bankrupting ourselves when we do that. Um, ben, perhaps you can tell me what's the big sort of like turbo Ben thing? This is the conversation we were having with Rick. It's like a thing that the visual effects department stuck on it to make it look different. Uh, tell okay. us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Rick's like, you did what? What's that? <laughs> um, I'm doing a book, uh, actually nothing to do with my email stuff, I've been doing a lot, spending a lot of time talking to Dan Curry, and Dan was very much involved in sticking a bit on the bottom of something, uh, turning it upside down, painting it another colour. In the days before CG, that was their only real option if you wanted another ship. Or otherwise it was like, that ship gets around a lot. There's some kind of IKEA type arrangement for people. You can go and buy like a basic freighter. Like, hang on. But can I have it with a big pipe on the bottom? Yeah, yeah you can have it upside down if you like. Uh, I'm, I'm, if I remember the running order right, I'm pretty excited about the next one that's actually going to come up. If we can jump to the next slide. So, yeah, uh, 174. It's been a long road getting from there to here, but uh, Archer's toy ship having that is. is Pretty cool for, I, you know, for me as a fan, I'm, I'm happy that we're doing we that. We did one. seriously consider this as being the last ship. Um, it's a definite candidate. Um, yeah, it's, again, it's a really nice piece of design, and it's like a, a missing piece in the jigsaw of, of Star Trek ship design. Um, one of the things we talk about, and I know, the kinds of, you know those of you who look on Twitter know, we've been looking at the possibility of doing kind of real world space stuff. Uh, and this is just 10 minutes into the future kind of level. Um, so if we do manage to do that, that would kind of be a nice, uh, nice fit, a segue between them. And then another of the, uh, the great reused freighters from TNG, uh, this time the Mondor, which was the pack lens, the, the, the most stupid people in space. Yeah, it's broken. <laughs> Help me fix. Yes. But they're sneaky. Yeah. 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 So again, you can see there's a pattern. You can see there's some method of madness. There is a pattern to the way of thinking. It's like, okay, 
let's do you know complete sets and anything within two G basically now it's like what can we manage? So we won't go quite to the end, but I guess you can imagine that if it was in TNG, yeah, I want to get it done before we get to the end. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Okay, so we're on to the bonus issues now. Yeah, so the bonus issues, um, initially, uh, we didn't really have a, a single concept for what the bonus ships would be. Um, and over time, it's really become the things that aren't chips or the things that were never made or didn't get seen. So uh, Conor Snoga really was more of a screen graphic than anything else. Uh, again, uh, a very important missing era in Star Trek chips, that moment between the stuff we know about and the stuff we don't know about. I and mean, I guess they don't want to make a show about that time because it would be two years of drinking tea while you got some. Um, and then next to it, the, the D4, which I'm sure a lot of you know uh, the story that the D4 was designed for Enterprise, was due to be the first uh, thing on Battle Cruiser that we saw and then uh, got canned by the producers just before filming, uh, leading to a continuity stream error where the D7 appears before you redesigned it, before they first made one, uh, there's one flying around in, uh, in Enterprise. Uh, what's really fun about the Conestoga is I didn't really notice it in the drawings before, but on the back there's rocket engines. Like four big ones. Four Actual small. propulsion engines. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. And yeah, so again, on the bonus ships, things that don't quite uh, fit. Things that aren't exactly spaceships. So the Codestal Weapons Platform, which I always thought was like a really cool little thing. Yeah. Uh, and Friendship One, which obviously start opening a can of worms once you start doing space probes in Star Trek, but, uh, you know, I think it's very, <laughs> yeah, exactly, there could be many more probes we could do, um, but obviously, you know, that we had perfect reference for that, and we had the, the CG asset from, from Voyager. I guess if you want to see probes, then buy a lot of the Friendship one and, and signify that. It's true for anything, if you want to see more of something, buy more of it. It's basically, you know, I'd do anything, but I have people who insist on my money. <laughs> we move on to our next slide. Oh yeah, now this. I can't believe I didn't think of this sooner. The Reliant. So, uh, I guess you know the story that they signed the blueprints for the Riot upside down. Um, they sent the blueprints to Hulk Bennett and he signed them, they got them back, and then they looked at it and they looked at the signature and went, Oh, he signed it upside down. Does he want it to be this way or not? <laughs> so they couldn't get hold of him, he was in Europe, so they flipped it and built it the other way around. Uh, this is the way it was originally meant to be. And you kind of see, when you look at you know, the original Enterprise, or the motion picture Enterprise, and you look at the Reliant, it kind of makes more sense. They just lost the, the engineering hole. Um, but actually, I think, actually, I think it's better the other way up. I think yeah. it's better. Uh, but it did suddenly occur to me that, you know, we should do the Reliant the way up they designed it. Um, so yeah, <laughs> finally. And, and then for the fifth one, it's the Pike Enterprise. So not the uh, sexy Pike that was just on stage this before very us. Sexy. Oh, not the sexy oh, Yeah, 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 yeah. Not, not, not the gentleman that we were ogling on the way in, but, uh, you know, the, the other Pike from the cage. So that, that's sexy that's too, Jesse Hunter. It was a really sexy I, I mean, he was, but uh, you know, it's yeah. Choose your bike, but uh, yeah, I, team answer. Anyway, uh, this is the, the cage bike. Kind of yeah. Bike. So again, something that people have asked for. Um, I think for you guys, I, I, I know you know the difference between the Enterprise in the cage and the Enterprise in when I was before. Um, so this is very much for the, for the hardcore. And um, a lot of people come up to us and go, "Which one's Kirk's ship?" Um, so, you know, we know that we're not going to sell quite as many of these as we will uh, of an Enterprise D or something like that, but this is, for me, this is one of the pleasures of collections being able to do the version that the, the people who really care know the difference. And I'm sure you will find something wrong with it. Alright, so we move on to the next plot. Yeah, so specials, uh, specials have basically morphed into 
film chips. I know people were asking why, why is this a special? Um, initially, our contract required us to do the JJ chips as somehow separate. We weren't allowed to do them in the regular collection. Uh, we very much wanted them to be part of it, so we figured, well, we'll make them bigger, do them as the specials, and then people can choose whether to buy them or not. The movie ships have a complicated history, normally, in terms of acquiring the assets, so we have to invest more uh, in creating them. The, I've told the story many, many times about how the CG assets from Insurrection got lost, and even if we could find them, we wouldn't be able to open them, because they have proprietary plugins and all that kind of stuff. So, unfortunately, um, we couldn't get renders of them at the time, so we've been able to reconstruct them using pretty much perfect reference. Uh, which, uh, I'm trying to, I'm going to say Fabio, but it might be Ed uh, has done that. Uh, and then, <laughs> then Gold Enterprise. <laughs> so, this was actually something the factory suggested to us. They were like, oh, we could go and play one of the shows. But interestingly, at the same time, John Eves phoned me and said, I've been gold plating your ships. Um, I, I have no idea why John would be gold plating our ships while he's sitting in the Picard art department. Um, but apparently he has. So um, we're still kind of finalizing. I, I think someone has to work out the final pricing on that. It's uh, actually, it is gold electroplated. Um, it's not solid gold. It's the same ship underneath. Uh, if it was solid gold, we wouldn't be able to afford it. <laughs> and we wouldn't be able to ship it really heavy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's something that should be, I think, just before Christmas. And, and everyone's been really admiring that at the booth. So we actually have a prototype there, and people have been getting yeah, very excited. From that, I've discovered that if you fondle it too much, it just ends up with fingerprints all over it. So you will want to just wipe it clean, stick it in a stand, and just admire it from a distance. Just like your gold jewelry. Okay, so if we move on from there. So again, yeah, uh, movie stuff. So a pair of Vulcan vessels. Uh, the Long Range Shuttle, which uh, Rob Bonchin has been building for me for four years. Uh, it's finally finished. Uh, he came and said, I'm nearly done, I'm nearly done. Does it come apart? No. Um, <laughs> uh, we might separately do it as two separate parts. The problem with stuff fitting back together is with our construction methods, you might end up with it being really clunky or it breaks. Ah. So we can make it so it came apart once, <laughs> <laughs> as many of our ships do, uh, <laughs> or even like half a dozen times. But if you kept pulling it out and putting it back together, um, it would require a different kind of construction method. Uh, and one thing I will not do, as everybody knows, is put things in the ships that aren't really there. Yeah, so no big spikes or anything like okay. that, which is basically what it would take to do it. Yeah. Uh, and then the Tapana hat, which was the other thing that Rob has been building for us for four years. <laughs> he was working off that... Uh, uh, Johnny Eves actually gave him one of the castings of the, the original model. Okay. So. Uh, Rob has had the perfect reference to study uh, and has seen finally kind of made some time and finished the ships off for us. So, and that obviously is uh, quite a different shape to the regular ships because it's got three legs, which you can't really tell from that image so much. But if you look at it from above, it's kind of like a starfish. And that's another one that I kind of, I thought we would have done years ago. Um, not blaming Rob. But I'm very pleased that, you know, that we've managed to get to that. One of the things I just want to say is, so although the main collection will end at 180, uh, that doesn't mean we wouldn't continue doing specials and bonus issues. Um, it kind of depends on finding things that are worthy, things that are worthwhile and seeing what the demand is for. So things like the rest of the Sonar ships, or um, we still have another like, Scorpion fighter from Nemesis. Those kind of things, I think there's a chance to go still do. So, we better move along. Yes, yeah, yeah, next yeah. slide, just to we'll slide through these quickly. So, so big ships, uh, the XL ships. Uh, for these, this has been an interesting journey. We did this thinking, well, oh, let's see whether anyone wants them to go. Uh, we really had no idea. Um, and the first 12 or so have been very successful. 
um, in various heights of smoke. But now we're trying to push the edges and see whether some of the more um, not identifiable Hebrew ships that had a series named after them really, I guess, uh, are viable. So uh, that can take the models on the stand. So those of you who've had a chance to have, have a look at it, I hope you've liked it. Those of you who haven't, come by and have a look. Um, you were talking about this is like one of the great Star Trek models, one of the classic designs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and the movie one was so cool. Uh oh, oh. Whoops. Stealthy. Didn't break it. Uh, they added all that detail on it, but kept the same shape. And it's such a beautiful ship, so. Yeah, you should check it out at the booth, it's pretty nice. And then the Enterprise J, uh, we've done every other Enterprise, so it felt like we'd really be unkind to leave the J out. Um, so that will be big. I'm not quite sure if it'll be as big as the J. Maybe in proportion to the D, it will always be right. Um, so we're pleased to be able to do that. And boy, we need to pick up the pace a little bit. So next, yep. oh, the Dreadnought. And, um, so again, uh, people always get very excited by an enterprise with lots of guns and extra nacelles. Uh, so I figured that that made sense to do that at the larger size as well. Um, and keep going, moving on to the next one. So the Discovery. Um, In an XL. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, one of the things about us being the kind of sizes we are, is that if you get really long, thin ships, uh, this is a hint for you, don't design really long, thin ships because they make okay. small models. Sorry. With square ships, they fit in the box really well. <laughs> Rectangular ones, the shuttles here. Uh, so we figured that uh, you know when we first did this, we were struggling just to go a whole bit of reference. And even when we've done it, we're getting emails from going, Al, oh, could you just stop for a minute and making some changes? Um, this is like a week before broadcast. So uh, we were desperately trying just to get this out at all. Um, and now, it's like been a while and Discovery's obviously established and much loved. So we figured that we should do this. And in fact, we have the next slide. Oh no, hey. I won't tell you what the next thing we're gonna do is. Yeah. So um, on the XLs there is, well, I, I'm gonna tell you something I wasn't gonna tell you, which is that we'll be doing a Shenzhou uh, and XL size as well. Because I think nice. that's a ship people really love. So this is your stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, for me, it's super exciting because they're, I mean, they look great. So I, I drew some stuff and then built some 3D models, but to see it in person is, and hold it is super awesome. And the detail is excellent. So it's pretty rad. We are, in fact, now entering the Ryan Denning era of the uh, Star Trek Discovery Collection. <laughs> so we've basically reached season two. So uh, I think the previous issue to this was for Hiawatha. Uh, and then the next one, you also have, this is an example of like make long thin chips. This is uh, quite different for us, I guess, a little bit of a challenge. Um, but I think it turned out pretty well. I think what's really cool is it has the chair inside the glass ball. So that's really cool. Um, and I still don't understand how this fits in the box. With the on. You know what, we haven't managed to break one yet. I, I mean, just, we break everything else, but we haven't broken this one. I, I even put it on the ground, it's fine. But um, yeah, it's great. The size of it's awesome. It's all the detail. It's almost, it's basically like an XL. Yes, yeah, yeah. an XL pot. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, anyways. This is one of the ones I think is big enough. I'm hoping it's going to turn up as a prop. I'm hoping this is going to be like on Screw's desk oh, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be awesome. That's nearly happened to us so many times. We're like, oh, can you send a load of models? Can you send a load of models? Uh, I didn't use them. <laughs> we send a load of models to the card. I'm waiting to see. Okay, next slide, please. So, yep, working our way through the yeah, Klingon fleet. What? I didn't even know you were doing that. Yeah, not seen that? No. no. Yeah, of course we're doing that. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, continuing the Klingon fleet, this one uh, was actually originally thrown up as a possible design for the sarcophagus ship. Um, ends up very much as a background ship in the back of the winery stands. And then, yeah, Ryan's um, beginning of the countless Section 31 ships. It's not just the Ryan Denny collection, it's the Section 31 collection for a while. Yeah, there's quite a lot of those ships just showed up at the end there. Yeah. yeah. It's your fault, you designed it. Well, it's the writers. 
Okay, um, and again, I'm just aware of time, so. Next slide, please. Oh, yeah, lighting up. This again is on the big, no, no stand, I'm afraid we didn't, we haven't got a stand yet. Um, I'm actually really pleased with the way it lights up. It doesn't, it, yeah, it doesn't really pass as a massive plasma star um, hanging in the back of the ship, but it looks pretty good. Uh, and there's another ship, this is one of the biggest ones we've ever done. This is a, a, a Discovery Special, which effectively makes it an XL. It's kind of the same size. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm really pleased with that, actually. And again, come and have a look. Uh, it's one of those things, you do see the ship in quite a lot of detail in the show, but it's uh, really satisfying to see it as a model. Okay, and uh, next slide. Oh, yeah, space stations. People seem to like space stations. So, <laughs> This is at Scott's request. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Scott's yeah. like, yeah. Okay. Scott's like, you're gonna do the section, you're gonna do the section of the one station, you're doing the station. Yeah. Yes, Scott, we'll do the station. That's not quite like that. I'm very, very, very fun of Scott and very, very pleased every time I get a message from him. Oh, yeah. So uh, there are actually a couple of Discovery Space Stations, but this is the only one that kind of got finished. This is the only one that has like a full set of geometry for it. The others have big holes in them, which we've been fixing. So before we go to the next slide, I have a feeling I know what it is. So I'm going to call up our special guest. Uh, so that's Mike Batham. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Round of applause. I was going to say while he was making his way up here, I wanted to give a shout out because we've got both the Irish Trekkie and the Scottish Trekkie here. Uh, and to point out that there's, and, and the Trek has, there's, there's lots of people, but I want to point out there's a bit of a gap in the market for Welsh Trekkie, so if there's uh, anyone here that wants to do that, I, I think, I think, I think you're filling that up nicely. It's, it's open, you know, and then, and then we could have Brummy Trekkie, and you know, it's <laughs> lots of things, so uh, I'd, I'd love to sort of be able to point out all sorts of regional Trekkies uh, next time we're here. But, uh, so Mike is from Star Trek Online. Hello uh, everyone. If we go to the next slide, hopefully I got this right. I'm very excited to see this. Yay! Yay! Got the right slide. That. Memory works. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Oh my god, they're pretty. If you haven't seen the Gargarit, they've got it up. Uh, Gargarit, sorry, I keep saying Gar. They've got it up in the booth uh, already. It is gorgeous. That is one of my favorite designs we've ever done. It's an, um, uh, obviously a 2410 update to uh, Discovery Club. Uh, which Discovery class is it? Oh, uh, it's gone out of my head now. Yeah. So. Help me. All right. Anyway, yeah. it's it's a it's a wonderful and insanely popular ship. We did a a, a thing a promotion recently where. So um, we, should, we should just stop for a second and oh, just yeah. explain what we're doing. Oh sure. So sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. sorry. I assume everyone no, knows no. everything. Well, we have never actually really properly announced that we have started to do a whole line of SDO ships. Vegas and, and we had yeah, yeah. Thomas come but yeah it's happening so there will be uh, at least 10 uh, starting next year yeah. uh, the idea is that they will work pretty they will be in scale the same thing as the original collection yeah so it they look really continue. really nice together I've already got my F with all the other evil ships in my desk and it all just fits real nice yeah I mean and obviously we've done the F and the Titan uh, you know, so we've done stuff that's featured in STO, but this yeah. is the first time we've really sat down and gone, right, right, we know a lot of guys play STO, we know there's a, an interest in this, let's try and give them what they want. Well, it's it's really cool for us because, I mean, A, because we're all huge Eagle Moss collector, hero collector collectors at STO, like, um, uh, I don't know if you've been by the office, but uh, our environment artist, Nick, has, I think, every single Star Trek ship you've ever put out in these two More giant time. glass cases by his desk. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, it's, we talk a lot about how being an Eagle Moss ship, or sorry, Hero Collector, being a Hero Collector ship makes us, um, like, it makes it feel legit, it makes it feel real. It's not just it's real in your hand, but it's real and it's next to the Enterprise, it's next to the Defiant, and it all looks right together. It's just beautiful. Yeah, so the thing with these, again, this is something of an experiment for us, because until now, the ones we've done that you guys have featured really heavily yeah. have had a life outside the game. Yeah. So, you know, the F or, um, I'm struggling to remember the name of things, this uh, is yeah. unfortunate, uh, Ezra's ship. So, you know, yeah. those, those uh, ships absolutely. have had a presence in books and in comics uh, as well as in the game. So this is the first time that we're getting into like purely STO territory. Uh, so if, if 
this is this is really is a case of if we provide them, we will make them. Uh, it's filled with dreams. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It's, it's so exciting. That's what I was going to plug as well. Not as in to, to do the pitch, but with the, the collection, as Ben was saying, you know, 180 will, will probably be in for that that uh, collection. These are in that size. So, you know, you can essentially just jump over and support this one. As you can tell, we want to make lots of these things, but we need to know people are going to buy them, you know, in order to keep doing them. So, if things are looking good, then we can plan some more. Yeah. It takes us about a year, so, you know, it's not like, you go, oh, we put it out, that was good, let's do another one next month. Yeah. It's like, oh, let's do another one next year. Yeah. Well, and I'll even say, like, you know, even if you don't play the game, <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're just starting the auction now. Who will bid for no? Uh, Mike is for sale. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, he'll design a starship for you for ten thousand dollars. Uh, so, uh, but the cool thing is, even if you don't play the game, which you should, it's free. Go play it. But even if you don't, these ships are like they fit in so perfectly with the Star Trek world, and they're all so beautiful that I think anybody would be excited to have one. So before the auction starts, I think we should move on to the next slide. Well, the, the one thing we just wanted to point out oh, yeah, with yeah. the Chimera very quickly is that uh, that was Nox ship. Yeah, wasn't the, it? the Chimera is a very special ship for us. If you can go back one just slide, go back one. Uh, the one on the right here, it's uh, it's not just a veteran starship, but that's Captain Nox's ship. So that's Aaron's ship. Um, and for those of you who haven't. Uh, played the game, uh, Aaron Eisenberg was a huge, huge part of Star Trek Online. He's been in a ton of our updates, he's been to our office a bunch. We were all uh, very good friends with him and miss him terribly. And uh, this is his, so we, it's really special to us that it's one of the first ones that's coming out because it's really important to us that Aaron continues to live on. It's really important to us that Nog continues to live on. And the first Ferengi captain in Starfleet is nothing to sneeze at and something that I think we should celebrate. Forever, because Aaron is one of the best people I've ever And a lovely guy as well. Yeah. Okay, real quick. So, quickly. wrapping up, wrapping up before we have sold off. Super speed, okay. So, obviously, we started publishing books. Uh, it's been a year now, it's gone really, really well. It's been a real pleasure. Uh, this guy's artwork is in that book, which is already out. Unfortunately, we don't have any here. But that book, it, Discovery Season 1 concept art, is off the scale charts of work that's been done on Star Trek, just in both volume and quality, there's an incredible amount. And we continue to repackage the uh, original Star Trek Fact Files material in book form, uh, finally giving the, the original series the technical manual that I think it's always deserved. It's got, I don't even know how many illustrations there are in there, but it is pretty much everything that ever got told about that ship on screen. And there's one really cool thing that people might not know, is that Scott actually rendered us out using his Rhino model of the set for the new disco version of the Enterprise, the artwork. So we have got Discovery Hero Enterprise in there with actual kind of almost production uh, illustration. Okay, next slide. We're going to have to steal that. <laughs> oh yeah, nothing to do with Star Trek, so I'll go very quickly. Uh, we continue to do uh, our line of alien ships. Uh, the Betty, designed by Jim Martin, so has a big Star Trek connection, actually. Um, and the Covenant, designed by Steve Berg, also has a big Star Trek connection. So these ships are designed by Star Trek designers. So these are coming. Uh, these will be out next year. Uh, as will the next slide. Next one. Uh, the PSG line continues, also obviously has Star Trek connections, uh, written by Ron Moore, and uh, visual effects are controlled by Gary Hudson. And next slide. Uh, that's it. Do you have any questions, which I'm sure you do, if you do, you have no time. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to get onto the auction, I'm guessing, so, you know, perhaps you can bid on time with Ben to ask him questions at my uh, Okay, I'm <laughs> free. Uh, auctioning <laughs> off. <laughs> like John Humphreys, I am free. Um, if you want to come to the booth, we'll be there. We're happy to go and answer any questions anybody has around the back of the booth. But thank you so much for coming. As you can tell, we're excited about what we're doing, so therefore we talk about it for the entire time we have. But uh, I hope you're as excited as we are. Come see us at the booth. Yeah? Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Have a good day.